this is the, uh, the main issue is this um, this helical gear here uh, you can see that uh, there are a couple of teeth broken off and there are the teeth as found in the bottom of the gearbox these helics these helical gears are the the gears that mainly wear there's a one helical gear on each shaft and uh, this is apart from the broken teeth the um, the gear teeth are very badly worn uh, so and if there are any gears that are going to wear in the gearbox it's normally those uh, this is the counter shaft or lay cluster only available from BMW now as one complete uh, cluster of gears which is very expensive but uh, and this is the helically cut gear that engages with the input shaft um, and again it's showing signs of wear I don't know if the camera is picking this up um, but uh, these teeth are very badly worn um, and uh, so this is going to have to be replaced fortunately I can get hold of a separate gear uh, so this this um, helical gear is pressed onto the lay cluster, cluster with considerable force but I can press a new one of those on if he decides to go for it and then uh, this is the output shaft helical gear and again showing a lot of signs of wear um, there are um, gear, there is a gear available which gives you a 5% higher uh, gear ratio um, so you get a consequential lower engine, slightly lower engine rev for any given speed in top gear um, and uh, I can get one of those, I've got one on my bike uh, personally I don't rate them that much although they, strangely enough they are cheaper than the genuine replacement BMW gear but I don't rate the gear that much um, because uh, having had my gearbox apart since I've put this in I've noticed that the gear is wearing and it seems to be wearing faster than the um, original BMW gear so when I actually come to replace that I'll probably put a BMW one back in on mine to you know, my bike. My bike's done a lot of mileage, but uh, if you don't do, I do about thirty thousand miles a year. If you do significantly less than that, as I know a lot of bike riders do, then I wouldn't worry about uh, fitting a higher gear if you wanted to put a higher gear in. Um, yeah, this is the the cam plate. Uh, what I'm going to do with this is uh, put um, a new. Uh, selector pull spring on because they tend to break um, this is the uh, this is the spring that breaks this lever here that I'm pushing with my thumb you can see it just moving that's the gear register what happens is is um, these springs break occasionally and it leaves you stuck in gear um, so we're going to replace that uh, just as a matter of course so I'll show you how that's done. Usually when I'm off travelling abroad, if I'm a long way away from home, going to be travelling a long way away from home, I take a spare one of those springs with me. So um, I actually took my brother's gearbox out in a Pyrenean campsite once to, because he'd lost his gears due to that spring breaking. So we'll do that. Um, and apart from that, uh, the only other thing I want to look at, uh, apart from replacing the bearings, is um, which we do as a matter of course, is just to look at some of the bushes on the gears, but they don't normally wear. The main bearing that wears is this one. This is the output shaft bearing at the clutch end of the shaft, and um, you can hear that. that I don't know whether you can hear that bearing is making quite a bit of noise but these are the bearings uh, that wear quickest uh, and you can see that this on the end of this shaft there is a circlet fitted now some um, 
some bikes were manufactured in the uh, late 80s and early 90s and BMW omitted to fit this circlip or even machine a groove in the shaft uh, because they deemed it was unnecessary uh, but they soon changed their mind because they found that it caused rapid wear of the um, the bearing and in actual fact my GS was one of those bikes that um, uh, was manufactured without a um, circlip groove or a circlip and I actually uh, had a friend of mine machine a groove in so that I could fit, fit a circlip when I overhauled the gearbox um, uh, or the bike had done about 80 or 90 thousand miles I think when I first overhauled the gearbox so uh, this one's got one so we don't need to worry about that but we'll replace all the ball bearings on the front of the gearbox so the input shaft end there's also a roller bearing and I don't always replace these roller bearings uh, the roller bearing comes with a track uh, that's part of the input shaft uh, and um, they're a very expensive bearing and they don't wear too badly so um, this one is showing a little bit of wear um, but I'll discuss that with Dick and decide whether or not he wants to uh, put a new one in that's up to him so that's it the only other things you need to look at are for wear and tear on the selector forks there's nothing wrong with these selector forks they're all like this perfectly serviceable so there's no worries there I'm going to change that but this is going to be an expensive job I reckon by the time uh, we finish doing this in parts alone we're looking at about best part of £600 worth of uh, parts these gears are very very expensive to replace um, the other thing that uh, we're going to replace is this cam face on here as well this spring is a, a load a shock absorbing load spring um, and uh, it works with the gear facing this cam there's one cam there and my thumbs touching there's another cam here and they rub up against each other and squash this spring up with uh, loads in the transmission and um, so we're going to replace those because they're showing signs of wear as well if you look at them carefully when I get it apart I'll um, uh, perhaps examine it with the camera show you one last thing that's uh, worth examining <coughs> is this uh, trough here uh, which can be removed by a screw in the top. I'll take it off in a minute. <clears throat> the um, the trough uh, collects oil that's thrown up by the gears and feeds oil down to the um, output shaft bearing at this end uh, to lubricate it and um, it's worth taking it off just to have a look at it, particularly if you've had um, um, broken components inside the gearbox because the, there could be debris co um, collecting in that which will prevent lubricant from getting to the bearing at the end so that's removed just by undoing this screw and that pulls out so just have a look inside there, make sure nothing's collected in there. <coughs> have a look inside the gearbox, <coughs> make sure there's nothing blocking the access to the bearing at this point here. Uh, once it's all nice and clean, you can just reinstall it, it just slots in and uh, it can be reassembled. Wear and tear wise, quite a lot to do, um, but the gearbox is certainly repairable. Just depends on whether he wants to spend the money. A couple of points I'd like to make about this job. Uh, now we're in the situation that we are inspecting the component parts is, first, always have your workshop manual, check the data in there, that's, make sure that it's right for your particular gearbox. At this stage, I've not 
mentioned any measurement data uh, for the gearbox because I don't want people to take that as being correct for all gearboxes for all airhead BMWs and it's very important that you should check the workshop manual. Um, the second thing is that um, many of you may be considering buying a replacement gearbox that has been overhauled and this could be a good idea if um, you're not that confident about doing the work or you're uh, in a hurry to get the job done. But it's worth considering that uh, an overhaul gearbox uh, that costs about £400 in Britain is um, in you're probably only getting a, a replacement set of bearings and having the gearbox set up for that price. A uh, replacement set of bearings from uh, one of the online retailers is about £150, I think, something like that. Um, and probably, probably pretty much the rest of the cost of the gearbox will be the person's labour who did the work on the gearbox to set it up. Um, so, um, whereas that money that you've spent on getting a replacement gearbox could have been spent on replacing other component parts in the gearbox that may have been put back partially worn and you may have chosen or you may choose uh, to replace those parts. So, not to mention the fact that um, doing the, the job and getting it right is very satisfying. Also remember that to set up the uh, gear shaft end float is a, a fairly time consuming uh, experience uh, and um, anybody who's overhauling a gearbox is working to a time schedule uh, and so may not take quite as much care in setting up the gearbox as you would doing the gearbox yourself an unlimited amount of time so to speak so that's all worth considering okay well i'll see you in the next video